Hello and welcome to Second Drafts Podcast, everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. I'm Jeremy. And I'm EJ. And today on Second Drafts, we'll be talking about luck and whether it has a place in your success. Uh, but first off, I believe, Ethan, you had some uh, news from the writing world that you wanted to talk about, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, this is just a... I don't know whether it's quite news, but uh, I noticed that uh, the website called The Renegade Writer recently did something that they called Pay What It's Worth. It's like, a, like an ebook experiment that they did with their online shop mm-hmm. where people could literally decide how much they wanted to pay for the ebooks that these guys have on offer in their shop. That's so, cool. Uh, yeah. Ended up with, you know, the minimum was $1 that you had to pay simply because that's what the the software they're using, I think that's a limitation of the software. Yeah. And then I think most of the books were listed at around about, I would say, nine ninety nine. And then they just allowed people to, I think for... You know, some amount of time, let's say maybe a month, I'm not completely sure. Um, Maybe even for a week now that I look at it. Then, yeah, people could just decide how much they wanted to pay for any book and get any book at any price. And so that was like a a group thing, like a bundle that they did? Um, I don't think it was a bundle in this case. No, it was just all the books that they had, you know, on sale in their store. Oh, okay, so individually people could just yeah. pay what they want. Individually for any book. Yeah, and people I see here in the results, <laughs> very interesting. I, I must say, it takes a lot of guts for someone to do that. I I wonder whether I would have the guts to do that if I had, <laughs> you know, say, 10 books on the market and just say, well, let, let's just let people pay whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, the results weren't too crazy, to be honest. They say about 330 people took advantage of the offer and the average order was about six and a half dollars okay which i suppose that doesn't say quite much because you don't know whether the order was for a single book or multiple books but uh it's still they they say they're not too unhappy with it i'm guessing yeah i mean 650 and have it at 9.99 usually that's definitely not too bad yeah that doesn't seem bad um, they do say most writers did end up paying below retail for the books. Yeah. And which, you know, that's kind of to be expected. <laughs> People will always pay less if they have the choice, right? Yeah. Generally. <laughs> Generally, yeah. And they say some people paid around retail and some, you know, a precious few of them actually pay higher than retail, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely nice, uh, to get more than <laughs> what yeah. you put it at. Definitely. So, I mean, would you ever consider doing this for your books? Well, it's definitely an interesting uh, model. Like, I know I've heard about it with uh, regards to other things. Like, there's a video game one uh, called mm-hmm. the Humble Indie Bundle. And oh, yeah. so, uh, kind of the same thing. You can pay what you want and... Uh, I believe now, I think earlier it was going to the developers. Uh, now more so it's for charities. So bigger companies are getting involved and you'll get games that are uh, more on the higher end uh, sort of things instead of just uh, indie games. Mm-hmm. But uh, they, they do that and uh, it seems to really increase sales. And uh, there's actually something that I read recently. Um, I'm not sure if it was the same humble, humble Indie Bundle there or if it was something different, but uh, Nintendo did uh, something there with them. And they found that afterwards, after the whole thing ended, it mm-hmm. actually increased sales. Uh, oh, so yeah. even after the promotion ended, uh, it kind of bumped sales for everything else at the regular price. Oh, wow. So that's, that was... <laughs> it's a pretty good advantage. Yeah, pretty uh, interesting uh, experiment, as it were, with that. I wonder if that would uh, also work for books, if you kind of did it just for a promotional time. Yeah. Well, I guess it's it's very much 
the same as you know having your your Kindle sales, you know your countdown deals and your free five days that you get every three months for your Kindle books if you've got them in KDP Select. And people usually report after those as well. Even after the free period ends, they tend to get a bump in sales. Except, you know, there we kind of understand why it is. It has to do with the rankings and the way you appear in the bestsellers lists. Yeah, for sure. But but here with the Humble Bundle, I kind of wonder what what caused that. That's yeah. an interesting one. Maybe just the uh, positive press, as it were. Yeah, actually, that could very well be. Got people talking about it. I'm wondering if, uh, like, kind of on the that side of things with a humble indie bundle versus uh, this one on the Renegade Writer, uh, it seems like they didn't bundle it, so uh, does it more so work as that singular novel, or would it work better as a bundle? That'd be kind of an interesting uh, experiment, I think, if uh, you could get a few people together to do that, but... It'd be uh, kind of hard, I would imagine, to get people to trust you on that. Like, uh, yeah, here's the sales, and so here's your breakdown type thing. Yeah, yeah, that would be, but it would be an interesting experiment to do. Mm. Have to keep that on the, <laughs> keep that as an idea. And yeah, uh, from what you were saying there, uh, with the average being six fifty, um, if they put their novels at nine ninety nine on. Uh, Kindle, uh, mm-hmm. they're getting seventy percent royalties, so it would be only six ninety nine that they would be getting on Kindle. So, not really that much of a difference in uh, how much they made. Yeah, and I I think that would be more than offset by the, as you said, the positive press that comes from this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. More people, probably more sales. I think it might be offset. And probably if people uh, were to buy it at the $1, they might be more likely to, say, buy a sequel or something like that. Yeah, of course. Uh, at a higher They'd be price. more likely to buy more books. And in the end, having a person reading all your books, I think there's a certain part of your career where that's actually more important yeah. than having a person pay you for each book. Having them read all your books and enjoy it all and maybe tell all their friends about it. Yeah, I think that might be important. There's definitely something to say. Uh, uh, something to say about business when it comes to goodwill and uh, yeah. increasing the <laughs> sales that comes from that, because people definitely. will uh, even generally pay more for good service. Like my father uh, does the same thing. Like you know, he could get a suit at Walmart and mm. pay really cheaply for it. Or he could go to, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with our stores over here, but Moore's is a, uh, no. <laughs> it's a Definitely. suit store and oh. uh, more higher end and uh, higher prices as well. So he'd rather go there yeah. because they have great service. Yeah, so yeah, of course. Kind of the same <laughs> thing here. If if people are getting a deal and you know they're really excited, they're really jazzed about it, they're more likely to tell everyone about it as well. Mm, exactly. So it would definitely would be an interesting thing to do. I uh, I don't know if I would be able to do it myself because I don't really have uh, much of a website to be able to do it on unless we started using uh, the Second Drafts website. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's actually possible, having a shop there eventually. Imagine that. Coming soon. <laughs> Coming soon, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned, viewers. <laughs> nice. All righty. So, yeah, on to our main topic of the day. Yeah, so I wanted to talk about uh, luck and how it affects success or uh, whether or not it really does. So mm-hmm. for the most part, uh, what I've seen in our crowd, like creative people, uh, they seem to really dislike it when people say that they're lucky or uh, they were lucky to get to where they are because there's a lot of hard work that comes into it that uh, even a lot of people don't see in the background Uh, like the writing side of things and then even just the editing and then uh, even after that you probably do edit after edit just to Hmm. get it up to the point where kind of you're satisfied with it and um, the more 
bigger you are, it seems the more uh, people will say like, oh, I wish I was as lucky as that person. Not understanding how hard it is to actually get to where they are. So mm-hmm. what do you think about that? Do you think that uh, luck is a factor when it comes to success? Oh, I, I kind of have the same thoughts sometimes. You know, you see someone that's really fantastically lucky and you think by yourself, man, or, well, what I actually mean is fantastically successful, let's say that instead. (laughs) And it's easy to ascribe that to luck and say, well, they just got a lucky break. And, um, I think that's, that's one of the biases that people study in, you know, logical fallacies and things where there's this kind of a, Jokingly, people sometimes say, you know, when, when something good happens to you, it's always due to hard work and your good work ethic and everything. And when something good happens to someone else, well, it's always luck. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we have to be careful about that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous, I think, to just always call this luck. Uh, as you said, there's definitely a ton of hard work that goes into most of the things. Um, so what you're saying is up- these people are just jealous. <laughs> I'm trying to be very kind about it and not say it outright <laughs> like that, but maybe it is a bit of that. And I mean, we've all got that. It's, there's no use in denying it. It's, um, I think it's part of the human condition. <laughs> oh, definitely. But I like, think it's, yeah. yeah. You look at people like, uh, I don't know, George R. R. Martin even, and, uh, he definitely puts a lot of work into his novels. And I wish that I could just steal those novels, go back in time, and then release them myself, and then get all that recognition. Yeah, well, but I mean, you know, George R. R. Martin is, he's just lucky. I mean, he slapped together a couple of, uh, you know, little ditties that he wrote on a, on paper napkins at restaurants, and he just published those, and that's what everyone's so crazy about, and I have no idea why that is. Yeah. <laughs> Just crazy. I mean, it only took 20 <laughs> years to get the uh, the Game of Thrones TV series made. Yeah, well, only 20 years. I mean, that's nothing. That's. <laughs> but no, but seriously, it's um, it's a lot of work, and I think people. You, we're just even talking about people in the creative crowd. You know, one author talking about another author. But I think it's even worse when you move outside that crowd and you have, you know, accountants looking at these authors that make so much money. Let's say you look at Amanda Hocking and she's a multimillionaire now. Uh, or even Stephanie Meyer from Twilight or J.K. Rowling. And you've got people out there that they feel like they're doing real professions, real careers, real jobs. They, you know, and then they look at these authors that make so much money. I'm, I'm sure they also think, man, these, these guys are lucky that they have such an easy life, such an easy job. Meanwhile, I don't. I don't think they quite know necessarily how much work goes into it. Yeah. I, on my side of things, I definitely feel that there, uh, it's a little bit of both. Like there's definitely a lot of hard work that goes into it and, uh, you need to do that hard work in order to position yourself, uh, in order to be lucky. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of examples of, uh, people who are uh, for sure lucky to get into, a position first and then the hard work kind of takes over after that so like for instance um uh with norman reedus uh he plays a character on the walking dead oh yeah uh, very famous now uh he got started in acting uh after he was fired from a, another job not anything to do with acting so mm-hmm. uh he <laughs> took his uh his frustration to the town as it were and then uh, in a drunken fit, he started yelling at a bunch of people and uh, someone heard him and approached him to see if he wanted to, uh, I think it was uh, work in a play. And that's kind of how he got started in acting. So kind of lucky that uh, that person was there. But I mean, oh, obviously wow. after that, uh, he worked hard at it and he, that's how he got to where he is today. If he if he was lucky in the initial stage, his hard work took over to bring him to where he is today. Yeah, that that's actually some kind of luck. It's fantastic. Hmm. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, he could as as easily have squandered that opportunity. Yeah, I mean, he could have gotten that little bump and uh, 
just maybe not have done anything with it or maybe not have had a good work ethic going forward and it would have just evaporated again. Yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely sounds similar to a story I heard about uh, Charlize Theron. That's the way she was discovered as well. She was in a bank throwing a tantrum because the teller wouldn't or couldn't cash a check for her and she was just (laughs) going on and then some agent saw her and there we go. That's how she got started. I mean, 10 years later, she had an Academy Award, so... I mean, that's, that's some pretty good luck as well, if you ask me. Now, I bet that small check seems uh, uh, pretty petty, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I read some of the trivia today about how much she makes in a year just through stuff like endorsements, product endorsements. <laughs> it is crazy. So, yeah, I bet that check is a fond memory. <laughs> But yeah, she's definitely a very hard worker and a great mm-hmm. actress. Uh, like I never actually saw the movie there, unfortunately, but uh, Monsters Ball, like her transformation in that movie oh, was Monster, just... yes. Uh, oh, Monster, sorry. Yes. I'm thinking of a different movie there with that different... <laughs> yeah, Monsters Balls with Halle Berry, and we spoke about her oh, last okay. week, but yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay, Monster, sorry. Mm-hmm. Very similar names, but uh, yeah, different. so... Her transformation in that just unbelievable, and yeah. uh, it takes a definitely a certain dedication uh, mm. to do that. Yeah. Uh, but even on the other end of things, sometimes it's uh, not just about luck, but the confidence and the hard work to make that luck happen. Uh, kind yes, of as of we were mentioning before. So another example, uh, kind of sticking to the acting. Uh, for this side of things, but uh, George Lansby, uh, he played uh, James Bond. I believe it was only in one film, but uh, what he did to uh, get the part of James Bond was basically he lied his way in. Oh, he did? Yeah. So uh, he went into like the producer's uh, studio, basically, and told the producers of the films that he worked uh, in films in uh, tons of different countries that they wouldn't be able to verify, but he didn't act in anything before. He was not an actor, but he really wanted to get that part, obviously, so he told them these (laughs) lies, and then uh, when he went into the uh, actual audition with the director, he kind of broke down, as it were, and told the director the truth about what happened, but the director basically said, well, yeah, you you did act. You told all these producers, some of the (laughs) hardest guys that I know in the business, that you were a big-name actor, and that's how you got in here, so... Well done. Yeah. That's, um, that takes, that's, (laughs) that, that, that's respect. You have to have for a guy like that. You can pull that off. Please excuse my (laughs) phrasing there, uh, viewers, but that takes some balls. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's a bit of a meta statement about his acting, which I suppose is great. <laughs> but, yeah, so, I mean, all of this, you can see it's quite clear. I mean, it's not just luck. You can't just have the luck happen to you. You actually have to place yourself in the right position for that. Mm-hmm. It's. Um, I don't think it's automatic. You can't have your life be on autopilot and expect it's going to happen, right? Yeah, like say that uh, for anyone, if uh, any author has a book that they wrote, but you don't do anything with it, mm. obviously nothing is going to happen. Like you're you're not gonna suddenly wake up one day and find that uh, uh, producer at Paramount or uh, a big name person at uh, Penguin Publishing hacked into your computer and <laughs> uh, found your manuscript, and then now they're contacting you. That's just not going to happen. So you have Definitely. to, yeah. So you have to, you have to put in that work there. You have to shop that book around and try and get it published, or you know, self-publish it at least, and promote it. Get your name out there. Do everything in your power to uh, make luck happen. Essentially, yeah. Definitely, luck is. Oh, you can find a million quotes online about luck and what it takes and you know just they all come down to the same thing you know good luck actually means hard work it's just that's pretty much it is hard work and the 
skill that you have to develop to realize what is an opportunity for you and what is not. And I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Mm. And if you say put your book out there and it's unedited or uh, unpolished, chances are even if you uh, had that chance of uh, luck, people are less likely to recommend the book or, or share it and that sort of thing. Because it's mm. it's unpolished, unedited, and hard to read, that sort of thing. So you have to put in that work to make sure that it's edited, to make sure that it's easy to read and and uh, an interesting story. Mm. And exactly. A lot of hard work. You've got to do the time, due diligence, yeah, all of that. And then you'll be ready. And one day when it's your time, it's your time. And luck can strike and who knows. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, talking about a lot of luck, there's uh, of course one of the leading voices in self-publishing. I'm sure everyone knows him, Joe Conrath. He actually mm -hmm. has a lot of strong opinions about luck, and he's been writing about this from all the way back in 2011. Yeah. So he's got some interesting articles, some interesting ideas on his blog that you can check out about you know how to succeed and you can see that it comes strong through really strongly from him that you know luck is a plays a huge part and sometimes you do the work and you wonder you know where's my success why isn't this working and sometimes the answer is as simple as maybe you just haven't gotten lucky yet so just keep at it keep going and who knows <laughs> yeah uh, i'll make sure that the uh, links are in the description there audience for you so you can check those out there uh, but uh, one thing from uh, that one in 2011 uh, that you showed me there, uh, mm -hmm. I definitely like this. So it's like a question and answer type thing that he's doing. So uh, he says, the question is, aren't talent and hard work more important than luck? And Joe says, they can help you get lucky. Yeah. So I think that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> His uh, Other things are important. His more recent one uh, from September is a, is a little bit more harsh. Uh, I would definitely uh, read the whole thing, but the title of, his, of it is Maybe You Suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's typical. <laughs> so uh, basically I think he goes into just saying, like, if luck is not a part of it, then maybe you're just not good enough type thing. Mm. It's a little harsh, but uh, definitely well, I would read it. Of course, it's important thing. to understand, I think, is that uh, that whole piece is written a bit... Tongue in cheek. Yeah. It's meant to be, you know, the people who always say, oh no, it's not lucky, it's just hard work. Then he kind of tells them, you know, fine, if, if you want to say it's just hard work, and then what are you going to tell the people who haven't reached success yet, but they've been working their fingers to the bone? You know, good luck explaining that then. <laughs> yeah, good luck explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Clever. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, everyone in the audience there, you know, please let us know in the comments what you think. Do you think that uh, luck is a factor in success? Uh, or do you think it's uh, all about your hard work and dedication? Or maybe a little bit of both? Now, let us know in those comments. And uh, once again, thank you for joining us here at Second Drafts Podcast. Uh, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on everything you need to write, edit, and publish your way. And also let us know what you'd like to see from us in a future podcast. Cool. See you next time. Cool. Cheers, guys. Do you want to support production of this YouTube series? Visit www.patreon.com slash and become a patron today.